Good evening, everybody, and welcome to, as Dean said, this first in our Women in Construction webinars hosted by Mayor's Construction Academy at London South Bank Uni. So we operate in South London across Lambeth, Lewisham and Southwark boroughs. But if you're outside those boroughs, we still welcome you, so don't worry about it. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about um, working in construction and we have some wonderful people with us, um, women that are working in construction with us tonight. Um, and we're particularly focusing on people that are maybe considering a career change. COVID has, COVID has had a big impact on several sectors, including retail, hospitality, and the arts. Um, so maybe some of those people might be out there in the audience um, and thinking about, you might not have thought of construction before, but hopefully we will share with you some of the reasons we love working in construction and um, inspire you to want to, to find out more. Tony, do you want to say a bit? Yeah, just welcome everyone. Good evening and thank you so much for giving up your evening. We're really excited to be with you and to share some great stories of some fantastic women working in the industry already and, and hopefully to inspire and motivate you to um, explore what the industry might have to offer for you, especially if you're at a, a crossroads in your career or transitioning from, you know, a, another career and just to hopefully enable you to understand that there, whilst there are 150 different pathways in construction, um, there, there is something for everybody. And, you know, most people have got transferable skills that are easily um, usable and uh, very valuable to the industry. So yeah, hope you have a great evening. Just to tell you a bit about me and my, my story. So I've worked in the construction sector for 20 odd years. My background is HR and training. Um, and one of the things that I love about construction is the variety. And whilst I was working in HR, I was office based, but I enjoyed going out onto sites, seeing sites pro progress from being a hole in the ground, literally, to the aquatic centre or a new school or new office building um, and seeing it come to life. Um, is what I love. So if we want to, should we introduce Tony, our, um, our panellists tonight? Yes, so, absolutely. First of all, should we, interview, should we um, ask Karen to join us and introduce herself? Um, hi, yeah, thanks Amanda. Uh, so I'm Karen Hyam. Um, I'm a regional commercial manager uh, working for Waits Construction. Um, I have been working in the industry for uh, worryingly I think about 20 years now um, and and I love it um, I came in through um, through a slightly convoluted route um, yeah I'm, I'm not sure if I'm quite classed as a career changer but I was I was working in various admin roles sort of temping uh, either you know working and doing a bit of data entry or I spent some time working at the post office um, I ended up doing a two weeks holiday cover um, on a, in a site office um, while the secretary was on holiday. And I absolutely loved it. Just loved the buzz of construction sites, the, the variety of people that you meet, um, the fast pace of the projects. Um, and I ended up sort of staying on there in an admin role and then, then developed that through into a career in uh, quantity surveying and, and ultimately to, to where I am today. Um, so yeah, massive advocate of, of the opportunities in the industry and, and really delighted to be talking with you this evening. Karen, would you like to just expand on what a quantity surveyor does? Because some people might not mm. realise. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So um, quantity surveying in a nutshell is uh, we look after the, the money essentially um, on construction projects. Um, and even within quantity surveying, there are a whole range of, of kind of different roles that you can you can do. Um, I work as a contractor's quantity surveyor. So, you know, I'm working for the, the, uh, the team that are actually building the job. Um, and I essentially look after the, um, the cost of the project, uh, look after procurement um, and negotiations with subcontractors and with clients. 
um, and also touch on a, a bit of legal and terms and conditions. Um, but equally, I, I have a counterpart who works for the client and that they would be, we, we term them a PQS, um, who work in professional practice um, and they, they get involved from very early stages of a job and you know, almost at feasibility of a project, you know, a client comes to you and says, hey, I, I want a cinema. Um, and you know, from that point, they'll almost, they'll work up you know, an, an early days cost plan for the job. They'll go out and you know, test that cost plan, procure it um, and, and stay involved all the way through kind of looking after the numbers on behalf of the client. So um, quantity surveying, yeah, it's it, even just that aspect of the industry. There's a whole load of, of different roles and opportunities available. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> Tony, did you want to add any more to that? No, it's really. It's, uh, so, what what really inspires you about being in the industry? Um, I think the first thing I noticed, the thing that really got me into it, was the just the energy and the buzz that there is. I think because um, you're physically creating something, um, you know, and and there are so many people involved in that process in so many roles from you know from the the site secretaries to the designers to you know the guys actually out on you know guys and girls out on the work face building it um to you know the people running the canteen and feeding the builders you know there are there are so many people but everyone is a critical cog in that machine that's that's creating something and you know a, a lot of these buildings that we create really have a, a positive impact on the communities that we're building in mm -hmm. um, you know I've, I've been fortunate to be involved in in a number of you know education projects in you know building schools in uh, building police facilities uh, in building social housing and you know it's it really gives me a, a warm fuzzy feeling to see that you know I'm leaving a positive impact on on the world yeah yeah, absolutely. Construction has such a massive impact on the environment it's in, doesn't it? In terms of, like you say, it could be a hospital or a cinema, you know, new housing for someone and, and that the community can really benefit, you know, greatly from that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think even through the process of constructing those buildings, you can have a, a huge benefit on the community and a huge impact. Mm -hmm. We at Waits, we run a lot of programs with the local community, the schools, the colleges, kind of giving giving kids work experience opportunities, uh, you know, chances to visit site and understand what's going on, um, as well as working with a number of career changers. And you know, we've we've got a real focus on on bringing you know new talent into the industry, um, which which we desperately need. And actually, something that that I've seen really be successful is people coming in from other industries and bringing mm. a completely different view of how things are done that can really improve what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, exciting, exciting. Are you able to give us an example of that, Karen? Yeah, you know, funny enough, I was I was thinking <laughs> this afternoon about who who are the career changers that I've come across who've, who've had a massive impact. And there's there's all sorts of people we've got um, we've got a young lady who works in our QA department um, and she actually was in theatre and musicals um, before coming across to construction. Um, and you, know, you wouldn't necessarily think about transferable skills, but you know, a lot of what she does is, is going out to sites, interacting with people, engaging, delivering training. Um, and she uses, she draws on all that experience from you know, being on stage to really have an impact in how she delivers her, her training courses and how she engages people to get involved with new systems. Um, another one, a, a good friend of mine now, actually, but we've, we had uh, someone come in from hospitality. So she used to work in bars in Greece um, and she came and joined our team um, when, when I was working down in Greenwich um, and she's worked her way from coming in in an admin capacity. She now runs our customer care department for, um, for all of our completed, uh, completed apartments. Um, so she's probably looking after a thousand plus um, completed apartments, liaising with the new residents, making sure everything's working, um, dealing with any issues they might have with, with the new build. Um, so that's just, just a couple of examples. Um, and then I could I could name any number of examples of people mm -hmm. like me who've come from an admin background um, and, and developed into a variety of roles from from site management to design to uh, architecture. Um, 
yeah, that's that's particularly for women a very common route into different uh, different roles in in the industry. And I think that's one of the other great things about construction is that sort of no matter where you come in initially, there's always room and opportunities to progress. So mm -hmm. you've progressed really well. You've given some great examples of other people, that, women that have, have progressed. Um, and that's one of the other things that I love that it isn't a, you come in and you stay at that level. You can go up, you can be managing multi-million pound part of the business, running your own business. The world's your oyster really, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And there's such a range of roles that, you know, if, if you come in in one role, yeah, there's there's numerous people I could think of who've, you know, come in in, in one discipline and, and diversified out into, you know, moved from quantity surveying into management, into, you know, bid, into some of the, you know, some of the uh, support functions. Um, and equally, yeah, people like me, you know, I, I came in as a, a secretary and I'm now um, running the commercial department for, for the southeast um, for weights. So, you know, there are there are huge opportunities and you, know, you, you don't necessarily need to have a background in, in construction to to massively succeed. Mm. Brilliant. Should we move on to talking to Alex? Yes. Come on down, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Alex. <laughs> Hello, Amanda. Did you want to share about um, your your journey and how you got into construction? Yeah, so um, I predominantly started working in, in an admin-based um, department role in about 93, um, and I worked at Westland Football Club. Um, just started off as waitressing um, and then I think I probably worked there for about 16 years and gained the experience working in hospitality to be able to move further in my career. Um, so I transferred from West End Football Club into working into construction um, and that was an admin role, um, PA to one of the directors. And um, as the, my career's progressed within Brea Group, um, I now PA for all the directors and I head up the Brea Foundation, which is the charity that runs alongside the Brea Group. So it's a, it's a, there's a short way into where it was, but the, um, I think um, moving and working in hospitality is excellent for customer services. So regarding whichever role that you do in the construction, there's always an element to customer service, a customer service background. You'd always mix in with clients and other people. And that's an excellent skill to transfer over into any job, particularly talking about construction. Mm. And what, what inspired you, Alex, into, uh, or inspires you about being in the industry, and particularly as a, a female in the industry? Um, well, touching actually what Amanda said earlier on, when um, so my first role that I worked for, I worked for an architect's company, so it wasn't necessarily dealing with the construction, it was just architecture, and I liked watching the buildings as from plan to how they procured through to actually being built, um, but I never really thought I'd stay within construction, um, I thought that you, know, that you move on, but I think... It's the diversity, the people that you work with. Um, predominantly being a woman, when I first started off working in the admin, it was a lot of males. Um, and as things have moved on, there's um, a lot more women working in the construction department than there never used to be before. So then there still needs to be more because I find a good working with men, but women are more organised. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just think it's, it's good. My role's changed it's working with my colleague Liz which I think you'll all meet shortly um but she's kind of changed my career path which uh is very exciting to see I mean within the Brea Foundation we've um evolved and so the Brea Foundation was created really for improving communities that we live in um in like highly deprived areas they do like training or, or we was there to to link kind of the areas that we work um, but Liz started and the programs evolved and changed and it's it's a lot bigger 
than it was before we're reaching further afield um with relative to training programs that we're doing and um qs programs that we've done as well so yeah we're looking to do further i think we do a women's forum in work now um which we didn't have before and all the women that we work with are all involved in the forum that liz heads up she'll talk about them i think um but yeah no i just i just like the environment I do like the environment. It's very diverse. Yeah. There is change, you know, and I'm quite lucky in the role that I do because it's evolved, because it's moved, basing on my admin experience, basing on my hospitality experience. We do corporate events, um, and on the corporate events that we run, there's boxing, golf, charity days, and I think because I've done the hospitality side, I know what to look for. Mm. So, you know, those skills do transfer over. Yeah, absolutely. Exciting. So, do do we bring up the fabulous Liz? <laughs> I think so. Come on in, Liz. <laughs> Well, here's not so fabulous Liz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Hi, Amanda, Tony. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak to people and women that are interested to come into the construction sector. Um, I can go on about it for hours, but you're lucky that you'll all be off of this by six. Because <laughs> I'm so passionate about it. But, um, so I'm uh, the Community Development and Social Investment Manager of the Brea Group. So I've been with Brea for 18 months and it was a very new role for me. So you can progress throughout your career into different aspects. It's a little bit like a, a maze, really. You just don't know where the industry is going to take you. But what I can tell you is it's once you're in, if, if it's something that you take to, your progression is ongoing right the way through to your good old age of 60 like me so you know I'm still excited and looking for new opportunities so where did I begin so my background is very um, customer service based I've worked in Abbey Nationals I've worked in um, retail but I suppose my introduction really was when I worked for the job centre, the old employment service, as a, a marketing manager. And I started to look at the sectors that we didn't have represented in the uh, job centres. And construction at that point, we're talking about 20 odd years ago, was definitely something, was an industry that we didn't understand. So rather than ask somebody else to look into it, I looked into it myself. And I can honestly say it blew me away when I identified the number of opportunities that were available in local areas that nobody knew about. So it was very much for me a drive on learning more about the types of different constructions. On top of that, the localities that these construction projects were in and how would I develop opportunities and programs that would ensure that local people could get local jobs. Mm. So that's where my, my journey started around learning, development, employment and skills. And from that, I then progressed after leaving the job centre, going into different roles. And I've done everything from training manager right the way through to um, community development, project management of social value projects, um, right the way through to what I'm doing now, which is the social investment part of the um, industry. So the social investment part of the industry is all about people. And that's what the industry is all about. I think that is the buzz that, that everyone's, Karen talks about the buzz. Alex will talk about the buzz. There isn't anybody that you don't talk to. So it's, you know, the industry is about all the excitement and things that you can do to help others and change other people's lives. Um, regardless of whether that is somebody coming into the industry as an apprentice and what you can do to actually help and progress those individuals and see them many, many years later as project managers that I have done. And when you can help with somebody who's been a lone parent, um, like myself, who's got into the industry 
uh, a very sort of local level, looking at doing something around the resident liaison officer's role. So that's very much around working within the housing part of construction and working with people that are our customers in their own homes. So that could be just talking about, you know, having a kitchen fitted, what color worktop would you like? Um, you know, what date would be suitable for you? That type of role. Um, there's the opportunity to come into finance, HR, um, payroll, you know, you could go on. So if you think of education, you know, we have learning development. So if you think of the roles that you would see out there in any other sector, we have them all in our sector. So there is an opportunity for everyone for whatever their interest is, their ability is, or their actual skills they've already got. It's just about untapping the knowledge and talent that you've got and align it to what you think is going to interest you. So I'm very fortunate. I feel that I'm in the best job in the world at the moment because that enables me to work across the business. So I work from, with everything from the MD to the big writing team to the foundation. And I work across all of our departments, that's construction, roofing, maintenance, um, and I work with every community within our contracts. And I look at how we can help that community improve and engage um, their social well-being, their employment and skills, access to jobs, volunteering, anything that we want to do around improving that community and offering opportunities within our group and the sector as a whole that's what I get involved in. And there's nothing I take more pleasure in than identifying some hidden talent and mentoring that individual, as we have done recently, right the way through the pandemic, to actually join us as a level six degree apprentice in quantity surveying. And that is something that you, 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 know, you go home at the end of a day or you sit off your laptop at the end of the day now and you say, that is a great achievement for today's work. We've actually identified that talent that the industry was looking for. Mm. That's great. And you've had a great journey, Liz, and I know you're passionate about it. So, so what is it, what is it that actually gets you out of bed every morning? What inspires you about being, you know, in, in Brea and, and, in, and in the industry? Um, the com camaraderie, the people, it's like, you know, I haven't worked on any construction site where I, can, where I can honestly say it hasn't been like a family. Mm. Everyone supports one another's roles because without one, the other doesn't work. Mm. And that's the, you know, that is the key to, to the business. I think people work hard. They play hard when they can. <laughs> um, it's very much teamwork, team effort very much around not just you as a business, but your clients. You know, you, the relationship that I build with the clients is just as important and the friendships that you get from that over the years is just as important as the ones that you work alongside. So you become, a, you know, it is around this network of individuals that are all striving to achieve the same, to build fantastic places, whether that's commercial, because, you know, that's a commercial is on new properties and buildings, and then you've got, the industrial side, the, you know, around roads and railways and, you know, infrastructure. And then where Brea are, which I've particularly embraced, and it's a new area for me, was around working with housing associations and local authorities um, around social housing. So this is really important. It's an important part of construction to ensure that wherever you are, you look at the client and, and the communities that you will affect so we are very hands-on with community development opportunities you know at the moment the exciting bit for myself is working with Alex um she does sound a little bit of a whirlwind but never mind she'll get over that <laughs> <laughs> um and to date developing digital academies mm. to remove digital poverty in the communities where we work that's such an exciting thing that gets me out of bed that's mm. a new yeah, absolutely. Can I, sorry, can I just remind people that if they have questions, please put them in the Q&A section, not in the chat, please. 
Yeah. So, there are some questions coming in, but please put them in the chat bit, Ron. In the Q&A, Ron, the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, Ron. We've got some good questions, so keep them coming. We have, yeah. <laughs> we, we're going to pounce them on the panel in a minute. <laughs> Liz, just um, following up, we've spoken a bit about transferable skills. What sort of, what do you think are the key transferable skills that people from retail or hospitality or other sectors may have that could be really useful and be applied in construction? Well, there's so many. I mean, key to anything that we do in construction is document control. Um, customer service, um, if you're looking at customer facing roles, relationship building roles, um, excellent communications. You know, communication is key in construction across every, you know, from technical to customer. It doesn't matter if your communication is good. That's, you know, there, there is definitely a job for you in the industry. Strong, strong admin background, attention to detail on admin. You know, all of these areas, we have abundance of roles within the industry, as well as the trades. You know, um, Karen has, has mentioned quantity surveying. You know, there's a national shortage at the moment of quantity surveyors. We need more quantity surveyors. So it's looking at exploring what that role consists mm -hmm. of and if that's something that you're interested in, you know, around the, the cost management side and you're an in, you know, you've got an interest in, in maths and and things along those lines, that is something you should really explore um, and have a look at the job and, and explore it online. And then hopefully you would have the qualification that can move into to that actual apprenticeship, that degree apprenticeship, um, which is, you know, out there at the moment. Um, resident liaison officers, you know, we have a resident liaison officer um, that her background had nothing to do with construction or housing. She was a youth worker. And she was working in um, uh, mental health with a youth worker. And that background has actually given her over and above the skills that you would need to be an RLO because she actually has all of that background to identify people at risk, which enables us to then put provision in or, or report that back to the relevant client that we're working with. So, you know, dealing with people in their own homes, you need a certain skill. It's, a, you know, it, it's very much like retail, you're dealing with customers. So and that is- What does an RLO do? Because some people might not be aware. <laughs> so the resident liaison officer is an example being, if you get a project where we're doing kitchens or bathrooms, you know, we might have a project and we're doing kitchens and bathrooms on a housing estate, that has to be totally coordinated from a resident's point of view first. So we may have the project, but the RLO will contact every single um, resident, explain to them what we're going to be doing, when we will be starting it, answering any queries, going around to each individual's home, knocking on the door, putting a leaflet through, introducing themselves. And from that, the relationships are built. And then from the information and feedback that we get back, that's when she schedules the letters and appointments to go out or the appointment to go and talk about the type of kitchen, the worktop, the colouring, you know. So it's a bit like having your own kitchen assessor come in. She, she works on that with the resident and then that's all reported back. So she then has to do all the reports and that goes back to the, the teams in the office and then they take that forward. And then you've got the date for, you know, for fitting and completing that kitchen. She is there from the minute they go into that property so she's the first person they see at the morning and she's the last person they see at night. And that is all about ensuring that that individual is happy and comfortable and feels safe with what's going on in their own home. Thanks, Miss. That's great. Tony, should we move on to the questions? Yes, yeah. So. I have, I have picked up a couple in the chat, so against the rules, maybe. Uh, but um, <laughs> there's um, Shumsa 
uh, asked a question. I'm just going to just roll up and find it. So Liz and Alex, just so you know, Shumsa is on the new programme that Breyer Foundation are sponsoring, uh, Fast Track into Construction, that started today. And she's come on and she, she was talking about um, she's got a, a, a background of senior management is really interested in, you know, transferring her skills. She's been international development and she's wondering, you know, how easy and realistic is it for you to transfer in at sort of the senior level and be able to get, you know, to get on into the industry at the level you've come out of another sector from? Good question, Shumsa. Yeah, very good question. Um, to be fair, it, it can be done. We would need our HR people to look at the actual individual's skill set against the requirement. But I, I suppose there is an element of research, ensuring that you are applying for the right position with the right skill set. You know, because each role and responsibility could be different in each set part of the sector. So I do find that your transferable skill meets that requirement, then there could potentially be a pre-employment work placement, a bit like the Breyer programme, where you get that work placement to buddy up with somebody within that role that you're looking for. So that actually that's what you really want to get, that little bit of industry knowledge, that little bit of industry mentoring from somebody, so you can actually get the feel for the job and the experience. I will be honest and say the more work experience you can get and the more access to individuals in the industry to mentor you the easier is the transition people like to meet people in the industry it is a people people industry so the more you can do about that the better mm. great Liz Karen what what's your your thoughts and advice on that yeah, I com completely agree with um, with the last uh, point you made there, Liz, around um, around getting yourself out there. Um, you know, if if you can get any work experience, and, and most importantly, those connections with people, um, it is absolutely a people based business. Um, and I think yeah, people trust people. Um, so if you can if you can get those connections, meet the right people. Um, to uh, to have those discussions and uh, yeah and and you know, show how your skills can be can be transferred across. Um, I think uh, traditionally, um, you know, the the assumption probably is that that people need to come in with a bit of construction knowledge or start at the right level. Um, I've seen it happen with with people coming in and, and transferring across into senior roles. Um, I think somewhere that might be might be worth looking and investigating is um, there's there's a huge boom in in offsite construction going on at the moment. I think that's that's going to be a big change, um, and and we're starting to see that come through. Um, and you know, I think that's a very different approach. You know, that's not not a traditional uh, way of constructing things. So so those traditional construction backgrounds don't necessarily apply. And actually, really good project management skills are what you need to be able to manage an offsite facility. And you know, uh, so that that might be an avenue to look down. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, good advice there, Karen. That, that yeah, there's a whole exciting new part of the industry that's starting to yeah. expand around, you know, mm. um, building information management, digital twins and the whole tech agenda and and sort of more like manufacturing than construction but still a, hu a, a huge other load of pathways opening up I suppose from that. Definitely. And one I'd just add as well that sometimes it's it's who you know not necessarily what you know um, and this is partly the reason why we're doing these webinars so um, the people on our panel today are all female role models and one of the part of their role is sort of helping mentor people or just chat to people and connect them with the right people. So if anybody on the call today is interested in that, um, I'll be putting my email in the chat box and we can, you can email me and we can try and put you in touch with the, the relevant people um, mm -hmm. and have a bit more of a detailed discussion with how we can assist you. So I just wanted to add that. 
Brilliant. Alex, you got anything else to add? No, I, I agree with um, what Karen and, and Liz have said. So I'll share on this screen because the other one's not coming up. Um, no, I, I completely agree. And I think also it's, it's not just, as I say, admin roles. There's, there's, there's marketing within. If, you know, if you're tech savvy, um, you can come on board and, and join in the company with loads of marketing as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be knowing how to QS or build blocks. And if... Once you once your foot's in the door, you can you can just if you, as long as you've got the drive and the inspiration, you can just travel, you can just go. So yeah. I think no, I no, think Alex good. yeah, I think Alex has just hit the nail on the head. If you've explored the industry and you like the idea of the industry, find an access point. The access point is the most important point. It may not be your ideal job. It may not be the job that you plan to do in a year, two years time, but it's the access point that I would get into first because it is a very fast paced developing business. So you know, I've seen people, an example being um, somebody that was straight out of prison, an ex-offender that I was mentoring in demolition. He started as a labourer in demolition and three years he was a project manager. That, that, that is the speed that things can happen. Mm. I would say, have a look at the access point, look at your skills, look at where you can get in and look at where you want to go, map that journey. Because once you're in, I can assure you, you're a commodity in an industry that is crying out for talent. So therefore, once you've got that first job under your sort of belt, you are, a, you know, a, somebody, a woman working in construction. So therefore you are in and then you start to look and explore. Mm. That, that's a really nice segue into a question. I think that the Lorraine um, Williams has asked about, she's got a project management background and um, with over 15 years in education, you know, how could she move into a PM role in construction and, and would she have to start at a junior level? Who would like to answer that? Um, shall I, I'll, I'll come yeah, in on that. Karen, I'll let you go on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, as you say, quite quite similar to the, the discussion we were just having yeah. around, you know, finding a route in is, is the key. Um, I think uh, probably looking at the right part of the industry to get involved with. So, um, you know, for example, I guess coming into maybe a, a professional project management firm rather than into a contractor, the expectation around your construction knowledge is going to be far less because, you know, that's that's more around the overall project management skill set rather than specifically you know, managing works on site. Um, so, so looking and, and doing your research into into which parts, because there are so many different different parts and, and you know, different cogs in the machine. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd, I'd look at that. Um, I think I'd, I'd just uh, kind of share a, a, a similar story to the one you just shared, Liz. I, I had someone come in and uh, actually made the decision as a career changer to, to step down um, and, and apply for the graduate scheme. Um, came in via the graduate scheme and, and within three years was a project surveyor because the talent just just shines through um, you know and as soon as that person was through the door we could see the potential and, and we we put a fast track um, career plan in place um, because you know you, you can see that and you can get that from people as soon as, soon as you meet them you, you get that feeling for people mm. and, yeah you, you know that opportunity is there um, yeah so hope, hopefully that helps um, I guess a couple a couple of options there excellent there's uh, there's some other very similar questions so hopefully um what liz and alex and karen have been saying sort of help you you know the same same advice applies really about you know your skills are transferable and um you know yes some companies may want some construction experience but actually you know it's about getting the, your networks you know we all know that you know four degrees of separation probably through LinkedIn so we, we can all put our LinkedIn 
details on on the chat at some point or send them out after so that you can link with us and, and we all have links and it's about you know building those networks and chatting to people and and seeing where the opportunities are I think that's what you you all seem to sort of be hinting at mm -hmm. um I, I think as well, we're talk, talking about education, something that's just actually happened. So um, I've been mentoring somebody um, who is in education uh, at uh, one of the colleges and her role there is head of apprenticeships, but she's been keen to move much more into the construction sector now that she's been working on the Section 106 and our social value projects. And what was interesting is she's actually molded her, her model um, of offer backwards to actually the learning and development and the skills planning of a project. So I've just been able to introduce her to a, a, a vacancy, which is all about the employment and skills plan from Prop 4 projects. So from an education point of view, there could be other things that you could explore because there is a massive need around the Section 106 agreements and the Social Value Act, which is about how do you work with colleges and training providers to build an employment and skills plan that meets the need of the, pro the life of the project. I hope that helps. Mm, yeah. Um, just looking at about, so similar themes, obviously, coming through so lisa's asking um how how can we get our cvs in front of the right people so lisa's saying she's got many transferable skills she always tailors her cv for each roles but um you know she's she's interested in oh sorry that sorry lisa mm -hmm. your, your question just jumped up someone's put one up and i sorry. took my <laughs> eyes off um um Yes, yeah, so she, she tells her CV, she was a property lawyer years back and a project manager, but can't ever seem to get her CV taken seriously. Any advice, please? Mm, I would say do naturally talented me. Yeah, we can we'll talk about, <laughs> about that later. Yeah, what you'll learn about later. Um, and I would also do speculative letters. If you, if you research companies and look at the difference between the types of work they do and and the locations there's nothing wrong with doing a spec letter directly to the md at that company and telling them why you would like to work for that company and what you can bring to it i, I can tell you i do know a number of people that have secured a job and recently alex will bear with us that we had somebody that did that within our business and our managing director put that out across the group i put it out across the group and we didn't get a response <laughs> but he, then wrote to, he wrote to the managing director who then put it out across the group and that young man is now employed in our business. So um, that's another opportunity that you need to be take, thinking, is this something I really want to take on board? Let me look for that business. Let me write to the MD. Yeah. Karen, you're doing lots of nodding there. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I was kind of just, just thinking, you know, the, the difference between receiving someone's CV through an agency to receiving, a, you know, something personal, uh, whether that's through LinkedIn, whether that's through email, but, but someone who's actually, you know, targeting your business, specifically reaching out to, to you as an individual, um, I think that makes, makes a big difference and, and um, yeah, I mean, look, as I say, it's a people-based industry, and and I can I can look at a number of the MDs in my business, and and that would definitely connect with them. Um, yeah, there's there's a real there's a real need for talent to come into the industry, um, and if you can make those personal kind of connections, and and yeah, reach out, be be bold enough to reach out to to the people at the top of the business because. I don't get that very often um, and it will it will make you stand out or differentiate you um, yeah fantastic advice I've also had experience of where and we've, we've spoken a lot about local community where I was working on a project building a new school and a local resident came up and handed in her CV um, she was interested in an admin role she handed it in onto site so she went to the receptionist gave it in and we ended up recruiting her as an admin person. Mm. Um, so just, again, that doesn't happen very often these days because we all use internet, we use Indeed and all the other, those other websites, but sometimes the personal touch 
makes a difference and stands out more now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in any industry, but particularly in construction, where there is a lot of small businesses in the supply mm. chain, there's thousands of businesses in the supply chain, you know, business owners and HR and talent teams want to know, the one thing they want to know is that you really want to work for them and in their industry. And, and that's the thing that's going to stand out. So, you know, putting stuff through, you know, CV channels and the you know the traditional recruitment channels you know being on the receiving end of that you it, it's really difficult so if someone stands out it, it's really great um so yeah definitely i would say find ways of making yourself stand out getting the connections and and you know sending in a letter a nice letter that says here i am this is what i want to do this is what i'm passionate about you know let that come out um because i think cvs get you know, just you lose the personality. And and as Liz mentioned and Karen said and everyone said that, that construction is almost like a family. It's a buzz. And so you need to, you need to stand out like you want to be part of that family. I think it's really important. There's a, there's another question here from anonymous attendee, um, but I'm, I'm sure probably others on on the um, webinar would like to hear the answer to it as well, is which jobs in construction are more appropriate for a person who doesn't maybe have any experience or specific education qualifications or skills, um, you know, are they the same as, you know, maybe customer service or admin? What sort of roles might you want to look at? if you, you know, entry level? I think that depends on whether you're looking at site-based or office-based, you know, so whether you're looking at a trade, you know, or whether you're looking at customer service type um, roles. Obviously site-based, um, easiest option to get into the industry is logistics, uh, through a, you know, you can get a CSCS card, you can get on one of those, those projects and you start off as a general operative. I know many people that started off of gen, as general operatives on some of the key projects in London, like the Shard, the Walkie Talkie, et cetera, more London. Um, they've started off there and then they've identified their interest and what skill they wanted to go into once they was on site. So I know a guy that uh, is now a crane driver um, he was the crane driver, ended up the crane driver at Canary Wharf, but that he was an actual labourer on the Barts and London Hospital project. But he got chatting to the guy that was driving the crane. Um, and there you go. Um, he saved up so much for the course. And then when he'd done the first course, that guy sponsored him. He said, right, if you've done that, I'm going to definitely sponsor you. And that's where his career as a crane driver started. If you're looking at entry level customer service, payroll, HR, I would suggest you look at any, you know, any admin position um, in any of those roles because you can transfer between each department once you're actually in a, in a business. Yeah, I'll agree. Um, um, go on, can go I add on, to that? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my phone's uh, technical issues. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So within the Breyer Group. Um, <clears throat> We've had people start off as labourers and then move over and do an apprenticeships. And we had a 44 year old gentleman do an apprenticeship scheme. So, you know, there is an opportunity, as we've, we've touched on, that you, you can transfer. It just starts as a labourer, isn't it? You, you drive in, he's moved over and he's one of the oldest apprenticeships we've had, but it's open. There is opportunities there. I mean, security, you know. Security, I've seen people go from security and I actually know somebody now who is a HR uh, manager in one of the logistics companies and she actually started out um, in welfare. So when we say welfare, um, it is basically like the cleaning and, and upkeep of the offices, the kitchens, the toilets. It's the general maintenance of a day-to-day -day office and that's part of our security and, and uh, in that industry, uh, security and uh, welfare provision. And that person saw a, an opportunity to get the job in the HR department many moons ago. And she sure. then got her training in that company and she's now the HR manager and very good at it. Mm -hmm. 
Brilliant. Karen, what about your thoughts and advice on that? Yeah, I think really, really similar kind of echoing what's what's been said. I know I can think of an example of someone who, who started off as a, a, a plant clerk, so essentially doing data entry um, and and ended up as the MD of our residential business in the north. Uh, so um, I think, yeah, just, you know, if, if you haven't necessarily got any specific education or or, or any specific experience to, to bring in, just look at look at what role you could do. Yeah, almost, almost what would you enjoy doing um, and, mm. and target that if you kind of look at, you know, what's what's the, my route into that that thing? Cause that looks like it would be a, a something I'd enjoy doing and be an opportunity to, to kind of move on from there. Um, mm. I think construction really is a, you know, it's a place where you, know, you can get, there, there are no limits irrespective of your background and your education. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many examples of, you know, people running businesses who, you know, maybe, maybe left school without even getting a, getting a GCSE or a qualification behind them, but have, mm -hmm. have made their way. Um, I think mm -hmm. that's one of the fantastic things about this industry is, you know, education is not the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah just you know what do you enjoy doing and, and seek out maybe an entry entry level role in mm. in something that looks like you'd enjoy it and, and take it from there mm. okay brilliant there's a couple of questions sort of related to the current times um and and do you know do we think there is um, opportunity right now and are people really recruiting uh, so yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. I think um, construction has continued a pace throughout the whole of COVID. Uh, it's, it's been one of the key industries that uh, the Prime Minister and the government have focused on as uh, an opportunity to keep the economy moving uh, whilst all this is going on. Um, and, you know, there's a, you know, Boris has, has talked at length about his build, build, build plan, um, and we're seeing that we're absolutely seeing that we are so busy in in pre-construction in tenders um, so we we are actively recruiting at the moment um, and I think a lot of businesses in the industry are actively recruiting um, there's a huge amount of work out there so you know I, from my point of view and, and what I'm seeing I think it's a it's a fantastic time um, and, and the opportunities are absolutely there yeah and and a similar question so do you think the work experience opportunities are there thank you for that question leslie you know, so, so yeah i i think i think they are i think we are slightly challenged with um with social distancing measures and you know visitors to site in the current lockdown and and i mean that kind of short term in in the the actual lockdown situation we're in um you know, I, I can't promise it. Yeah. Even even in my role, I'm I'm not really supposed to be visiting sites unless it's absolutely necessary. So, um, so that is maybe a slight short term challenge. Um, but uh, but as soon as we're kind of the, the lockdown restrictions are, are lifted, um, definitely. And I know we're looking at, at what we can do virtually in in the meantime. So we've delivered some. Uh, we've actually got some virtual work experience sessions running. Um, within the business um, and in local communities to try and keep that engagement and keep those opportunities there, mm -hmm. albeit not, not in a kind of physical face-to-face yeah. -face format. Yeah. I think the main thing about it is to use this time and opportunity to really research the industry, take the opportunity to research your areas that you're willing to travel to and work in, find out what long-term projects are there, what housing projects are there, you got to remember within construction, you look at your housing associations, it will say how many homes they've got, if they're repairing them. You know, there's lots of opportunities to look at locally and, and further afield is identifying what are you willing to do to travel. You know, I can share with you that I recently, very recently, got offered a job in Jersey um, to run a whole project around social value. And it just, you know, for me, I'm not looking to travel that far, but um, that just gives you the sort of dynamics of how far you can be offered a job in this industry. So it's best that you look at where you want to work, what type of industry within construction. And then once you've identified it, that gives you your focus. And I would just go out fully focused, constantly looking for that opening. Mm. 
and mm. that in that individual that's going to give you that chance. Mm. Tony, I'm just aware of... Yes, that hour went time. quick, didn't it? <laughs> it disappeared. So we haven't managed to answer all the questions, but we will pick them up and come back to you um, offline. So um, thank you very much for those, all those questions. And we hope that we've inspired you to think more about construction. We have alluded to something mentioned, naturally talented me. So... Naturally Talented Me are, have partnered with both Freya Group and um, the Mayor's Construction Academy, and it's a different way of looking at construction. Um, at, sorry, not construction, at recruitment even. Um, so instead of focusing on your qualifications and your experience, and we've had some questions around if people haven't got experience in construction, how can they get into it? Naturally Talented Me looks at your natural talents, as it suggests. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with uh, just showing you. Um, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so Naturally Talented Me um, is a different way of recruiting. So as I said, it looks at your natural talents and then matches those to job roles that are advertised. So when they look at the job, when company look, has a vacancy, they identify the natural talents that they're looking for. So it could be, as it says on here, focus, attention to detail, creative, communicator, um, and then matches them. And you can develop your own, your online profile. Um, you can have video, upload videos, photos, um, so it's far more dynamic um, profile than your traditional CV. Um, so it's a new way of presenting yourself and promoting yourself. Naturally Talented Me is working with, construct with us, but it is also working in other sectors. So it's not just construction specific. So I would encourage you all to go on, have a go, develop your profile on Naturally Talented Me. So it asks you questions about your hobbies and from that identified your talents in a very clever way. Um, and you may find that you're matched to roles that you hadn't even thought of um, or weren't even aware of roles. So we've said mm -hmm. there are 150 different roles in construction. We can't mention them all today. So hopefully, um, so go on, have a go. So go on to naturallytalentedme.com. If you then do forward, and I'll put this in the chat, forward slash um, sector forward slash construction and that will take you to the Mayor's Construction Academy page but um, it's a great way to promote yourself look at and identify your talents learn more about you know, what your talents are there might be some things that you hadn't even realised that you were aware you had so have a go at that Tony did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a great platform, and it helps you. It helps you to map and trans. It maps across your talents to the roles in constructions and others. So that will really help you if you're not sure what sort of role you might map to and what your attributes might link to. Uh, and in addition to that, um, sponsored by Brea Foundation, we are currently running a series of four programs for you to explore the um, higher and technical level. Um, uh, management roles in in the construction industry um, and it's a program that's specifically free for um, women in in the east london area and potentially um, to open that wider to to the rest of london and, and around abouts but if it's something you're interested in um, dean's kindly put the links in the chat um, and we, we've had some brilliant people through the program, particularly women, um, and they're, they're now off enjoying, um, you know, roles that they never thought they would, might have in, in construction. Dean, sorry, are you able to put in the link to Naturally Talented Me in the chat as well for me, please? I think, I think he did. He did, okay, thank I think yeah, yeah, it's in there um, in that sense. So thank you very much. Have we all finished? I've stopped the recording. 
Thank you. Yep. Sorry. 